10 compared to everything else I've heard this morning or this, this evening for me. But um, anyway, we're going to talk about visualising data with Visio and SharePoint. So who am I? I'm a SharePoint trainer. I've got one URL up there. I think I've got about 20 at the moment. And actually, my little note at the bottom saying coming soon is probably the most exciting thing that I can't really talk about at the moment. But it joins all of our things together and um, broadens the community down in the Asia Pacific region. So we organise events, um, SharePoint conferences in New Zealand, Australia, Southeast Asia. Looks like we're in Singapore again next January and um, we did one in Hong Kong for the first time last year. So that's me, live and breathe SharePoint and definitely a enthusiast and evangelist, I guess. Um, we, oh, there's my, all my contact things down the bottom. So again, I'm sure you'll get all these slides. So session overview for today, basically I've broken it into four sections. One about sharing diagrams, so just looking at the repository, very simple stuff and being able to view them within SharePoint and share them with your organisation. Secondly, about improving uh, processes using wikis, using web parts and being able to use those Visio diagrams so that they can be interacted with and uh, of more value to the people who have them rather than just stored in a library and never ever looked at again. Third one is creating, so that's looking at how we make data-driven diagrams and how they pull data from all sorts of other source systems and are then displayed within Visio and then SharePoint as the front end. And then finally, connecting all the pieces together. And some of these sections overlap, so you will see me demonstrate some of them throughout the whole thing. But looking at pages, dashboards, and being able to, I guess, finally enable better decision making. So that's pretty much what we're looking at today. And the structure of the session is very much, I'll give you a little wee overview of what I'm about to show you. And then the rest is all demos. So I'm going to first of all just recap on, I guess, why Visio Services came about in the first place, or Microsoft's thinking behind it. And there were three key things, what do users want? And the first one was, I want to be able to view and share diagrams in SharePoint, meaning that uh, you might have a large organisation where only a few of the people are actually authors of Visio diagrams, and the rest of the people in the organisation want to be able to see them. So you either need a Visio viewer, or this allows you to put them up inside a SharePoint site and have people be able to access them and see them very simply and easily in one place. Secondly, the requirement was that people wanted diagrams that are always up to date so that the data that's being pulled through from whatever other system is instantly refreshable and available and means that what you're looking at is current. And then thirdly, wanting diagrams on SharePoint pages. So obviously this relates back to web parts, but it's not just having the web parts being displayed on, web, on SharePoint pages, but also being able to connect them to other web parts, other sources of data, either within your SharePoint site or within other source systems. Okay, so the first demo is very simply about sharing Visio web drawings. So I'm going to jump straight into Visio to start with. Sorry, I've got too many windows open here. And we're just going to start by looking at a plain Visio diagram. I'm kind of assuming here that everyone has some Visio experience, so I'm not going to go into the detail of what you can and can't do with all the different Visio functionality, apart from to show you a couple of things that you'll see once you get it into the SharePoint environment. So I've just got a um, process flow diagram here. I'm showing swim lanes. And the reason I'm showing this is so that we can have see what that comes out like when it gets loaded up into a SharePoint library. Um, and you can see you've got all sorts of different shapes and you're able to see shape data that's stored behind these shapes inside of Visio and then again inside of SharePoint. So there's something called shape data here and whatever has been stored within the Visio diagram is then viewable within SharePoint. So the whole idea is you go ahead, you create your diagram, you can have multiple pages, 
and then you're going to save it up into SharePoint. So the saving mechanism is, in 2010 anyway, is either by doing a save as and making sure that you're saving it as a BDW file. So out of the box, the SharePoint um, provides a BSD file and the one that you need to enable it to be seen inside of SharePoint is this BDW file. So you can see that I've got the saved to SharePoint. I can choose the library where my SharePoint site is and go ahead and save it straight up there or use save as or I upload it and any other thing. But the main point being you do need it to be a BDW file in this one and not in 2013, which is nice. Okay, so then once you've saved it up there, I just want to show you the basic functionality within the SharePoint site. So we'll jump straight into a SharePoint demonstration site. Just before I do that, there is a site template that I am using for this particular, this, this first demonstration, and it's called the um, Visio Process Repository template. So you can create that. Something's happening on my thing here, or not happening. Hmm. Just by going to new site, okay, it's loading now. <laughs> it's because I'm in New Zealand. It's a long way away. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got the new site and then we've got the Visio Process Repository Library, which is just a site template. I'm going to go through some of the technical what's set up in central administration and features and so forth in a little bit, but this is just simple stuff. So when you, when you use that site template, you end up with a process diagram library that's, um, put, that's got certain, oh, it's just a document library, but it has certain content types already preloaded. So you can see that it's got a lot of the uh, different types of diagrams, cross-functional, BPNN, and so forth that are automatically set up in there for you. The other thing that comes through is there's a keywords field which is one of the standard site columns within any document library in SharePoint, but it pulls through the swim lanes. So you know how I showed you the diagram. With the swim lanes, you can see that they all come through here. The other field that is pulled through is a category field, and this tells you whether there's any validation areas, errors found. So if you've run validation on your diagrams, it will show up in here. It's got version control on it and approval and so forth. You could go ahead and load your Visio diagrams to any library and you could add these site columns. Uh, be careful that you're choosing the category, not categories. And you would get the same thing when you loaded your Visio diagrams into the library. So it's just exactly the same as any other library. You can see here there's a slightly different icon for the BDW file as opposed to the VSD file. Once you've got it up there, you can just click on the diagram or any user can and they don't have to have Visio and they're going to get this Visio web access view to view their diagrams. So you can see here that I've got the ability to change pages. I can go to um, any different types of views. If I've got it set up and we're going to get into that a lot more with different links and so forth, then that would all become visible too. The other thing is I can see the shape data that has been shot, has been stored inside of Visio, so that would be the data that's inside of Visio that's been configured by the author there. Um, I can zoom in, I can pan around the whole thing to have a look at it. I can open it up in Visio if I had permission and if there was data here and so forth or if the, doc, the document had been altered in some way, I can refresh it. So that's just your basic viewing ability within that process diagram library and I can go ahead and do that for any one of my Visio diagrams there. So incredibly easy and nice and fast to be able to do. Okay, I'm just going to jump back into the next part. And just to recap on that, and I really just wrote this if you were looking at PowerPoints afterwards, it's nice to know what I talked about or demonstrated, but you'll have all that anyway if we're videoing it. But saving as a VDW file, um, then the Visio repository template, if you did want to use it with the process diagram library in it. Okay, so the next step I want to move on to, which I'm going to jump straight into the demonstration for this, is to look at improving processes. So this just takes us to the next level of 
um, how we'd use some of those diagrams once they're up inside of SharePoint. So the examples that I'm going to start with are using a knowledge wiki. And so we've got our diagrams that are kept in our process library, wherever that may be, on whatever site it may be, but then we want to start showing it on the pages. So we can do things like simply just embed a web part on a page that has a Visio diagram that might have clickable pictures and take us to different parts of the site that's nice and simple. Again, I'm just showing you lots of different examples to give you ideas of how this can be done. You can have connecting web parts where you're showing a process and then a sub-process. So I've got two web parts on this page and I'm going to build throw one of these web parts on a page in a minute, but um, you might have the top level one on one side of the page with the, with the overall process, and this is showing a very simplistic one, but if you can imagine it a bit more complex, so that when you actually drill down to the other, um, to one of the sub-processes, it's going to show you on the other page a sub-process of what the detail is within that one. So quite a nice visual view of just, if you want to see um, more complex business processes and see them drill down. I actually have on this one page a, because we were playing with different ways where you can hyperlink to information within Visio diagrams from within the SharePoint page and this was a property viewer web part that I downloaded and I'm sure I've got a link to it somewhere that I can provide but it just shows you all the values that are in there but in a different web part on the page and then you can link off if you wanted to to the different things that you may have in your Visio diagram, other information and so forth and so forth. So as far as being on a um, wiki page, so the idea here is that say you're using your wiki to contain things like policies and procedures and you're, you're putting a lot more information into wiki pages as opposed to keeping them in Word documents, then you might want to start embedding um, I'm going to create a new one here. Oh, let's just call it staff expenses. You might want to start embedding your Visio diagrams into those pages. So I'm creating a new page here in my wiki. I'm going to go ahead and create it. I have actually um, got some information in a Word document that I'm going to copy and paste in here, so the idea being that I've been working on a particular process and it's going to be my staff reimbursement process. I might have different links that go off to different parts or different forms that open depending on how my wiki page is set up, but I want to go ahead and put in a web part here that is using, and I go under the business data one because we're looking for the Visio web access web part, and I'm going to add that to the page. So that then I can begin to show not just a wiki page, not just links off to different documents, different things that people have to do, but also the process itself. So to do that within my Visio web access web part, I'm going to come along and find out where that diagram I want is stored. And it's going to allow me to navigate through to the library. or the site, sorry, and then down to the library level. And you'll see these under the process diagram library, you'll see a list of all the diagrams come up. So it just this is probably going to take a little wee bit of time here. And I'm going to navigate through to the expense claim process, so you'll see that it's just loaded the URL down the bottom. And that's going to put that diagram on the page for me. You'll notice that you always have to click on the apply and the web part properties here to be able to see the diagram over here and then you can actually manipulate it a bit. So we've got the diagram that's related to the, the expense claim process and you'll see that there's all sorts of things we can do. We can override the web web drawings initial view so we can actually choose what size we want it to come out when 
the uh, diagram is saved. We can choose to show refresh or not, whether or not we want the users to be able to open it in Visio. So these are just web part properties, so it's just how that web part's being used. Whether we want the users to be able to zoom. In this particular case, there's only one page, so I'm not going to choose the page navigation. And we can choose the general settings like you could with any other web part and have it, um, you know, resize it and so forth. So quite simple, I'm going to take that off as well. I'm going to apply the changes and you'll see that then I've got just a really simple example of having a policy and then having my diagram within it. And of course, again, if I had links set up within my diagram, which we're going to look at um, in a little bit, uh, then they would all be shown there too. But it makes it a lot more interactive for the user to know that your diagram is then part of whatever your written policies and procedures are and that they can be updated at any time. So hopefully that made some sort of sense there. The next thing I'm going to show is, let me just jump back in here so I do this in order. So key points here, sorry, is just about embedding drawings as web parts. I did that very simply with one of them. You'll see them all over the next part of the demonstration, making them interactive with shape data. And we're just going to talk about JavaScript to extend them, and then I'll show you a couple of examples of how you can do that. So what I did just then was straight out of the box, just putting a web part on the page and connecting the Visio diagram to it. I just want to step back one little wee bit first for a little bit of a technical overview on the architecture of how Visio services works. So the idea being that the creator is going to create the Visio diagram and then connect it to a data source, which is going to be our next bit, is all about how we connect data to the diagrams themselves. Then the diagram is uploaded to SharePoint, and this is where Visio services comes into play. The consumer requests the diagram from within SharePoint, and the data is refreshed and it's rendered in the browser. So quite simple. Um, as far as Visio services, there's a Visio graphics service. So you do actually have to enable the, the Visio graphics service under the service applications in central administration before you can actually use it. It is an enterprise feature. You can configure different custom, oh, sorry, different data sources. So out of the box, you'll see if you look at the trusted data providers, all of the ones like SQL, Excel, SharePoint lists, all of those ones are already in there, but you can also have custom data providers if you have other data sources you want to use. And it does support the different security models. So to get there, looking at central administration just from a service app point of view, making sure your Visio diagram is a VDW, and we're going to look at all those connecting points in just a second. Within SharePoint, the SharePoint sites that you're viewing the diagrams on do need to have the enterprise site features enabled, which allows you to see Visio services. Okay, so as far as using JavaScript, and I'm just going to run through the example here because some of the things, some of the next bits of demonstration do use JavaScript queries in them. So basically, if you want to do a little bit more than what you can do out of the box, which I'm going to show you some connecting web parts and things like that, which are just using standard out of the box features, then you can use the JavaScript mashup API. And this allows you to do visual markup or have custom handlers for mouse events, so hover over and have different things happening when someone hovers over the shape. And that little diagram there, you can see the little picture comes up um, and shows you um, when someone hovers over it, it gives a, a visual display of something. Or and it can expose different diagram data depending on what you want the users to be able to do. So the idea is that if you've got complex, more complexity and more demands for on what you actually want to view, then you can do this through the JavaScript API. I have a little video here because I couldn't do it on the demo machine that I'm on at the moment, just showing you an example of um, the types of things you can do. And this is all available if you want to download it too, just to have a play with it. But what happens is you put the JavaScript file, you store that up within your Visio site, and you put it within a content editor web part. And you can see in this one, it's really just giving you a whole lot of examples to see the types of things you can do. So it's allowed me to put the shape of the phone 
and then choose the highlight shape as a type of annotation. And when I update it, it just means that when someone hovers over it, it could come up as a highlight. Uh, again, there's another example here just showing. If I go ahead and choose one, um, you can see the email one there, then I can choose for shapes to come up. So again, it could be an image based on the type of shape that you're using, or it could be, again, text, depending on the type of um, command that you're giving it. So this is really just to give you an idea of the type of things that can be used, and it's pretty simple, but hopefully it gives you enough of an idea. Oops. And that was just showing another bit of custom. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay. So again, just getting there on that one, you have to create the JavaScript file first, upload that to the SharePoint site, create your Visio diagrams, and then have the web parts talk to each other within SharePoint. So before I jump into this one, let me show you a couple of examples. Actually, no, I'll do that just after I get through this next bit. So the next section is more about Visio and how we actually use the data or create the data-driven diagrams. So examples of this are things like network status. So if you want to pull data from SQL or from any other systems that are containing information that you want to display on a diagram, then you can visually display where things are up to. Things like maps. And you'll see some of these examples. So this is all showing different metrics on each of the little things on the map based on the data that's being pulled through from another list. Processes is an interesting one, and I do have one small demo on this, and that's showing the amount of information linked to an actual um, process. So you can look at areas where it can be improved or changed and look at the gap analysis between what you're doing now and what you could be doing based on the metrics that's being stored against it. And then there are some good examples online of manufacturing supply chain. So I haven't built one of those out. Um, I think there's lots of that information readily available. But again, that's pulling information and aggregating it and showing it in a visual context. OK, so what I want to show for the demonstration of this one is, first of all, jumping back into Visio again. And we're going to take a look, first of all, whoopsie, at a Visio diagram that has just a few pages on, and we do SharePoint training, so this is an easy demonstration for me to build out just to show you what data graphics are and how we can add them into the different pieces within our Visio diagrams. So I'm just going to move to one of the pages here. And you'll see that I've got a legend up the top, which we'll be putting in, and I've got a little icon or a um, shape, sorry, that has got data already connected to it. So the bits of Visio that we're actually working with at this point, and I will build end-to-end -end one of these right from scratch, but I just want to show you some of the concepts first and one that's already built. So what you can do is you can actually link data to shapes. So you can choose from Excel, Access, any of these different things that you've previously created, and it'll go through a wizard, and you'll see me do that shortly. Um, and once you've connected to that site, that particular one, you can actually refresh your data, and you'll end up with an external data window. So I've got my, let's see. I've got my external data showing here. Oh, there we go. Uh, and you can see that this, what I've done with this particular one is I've linked it to a SharePoint list. So I've got things like the title, the series, the prerequisites, the course costs, the duration, skill level, and so forth. So I want to use that information to visually show on my diagram um, exactly what these look like. So in this particular case, I have already configured the data graphics. So that's where this little icon up the top comes in, and you can have different data graphics for each of your shape. 
So in this example, if I hover over one of these other ones, you'll see that it gives me a different display. Now I've configured this one to look like this, which is cool because as soon as I can bring on another document or shape or whatever, and if I was to go and connect a different course to this shape that hasn't been connected before, then I can actually do that and it'll come up with the same data graphic that I've used there. So you can see here that as per my legend, I have the level showing here, the name of the course showing here, the course cost and the course duration. And I can do that um, and change any one of these ones as I wish. So I've got the option to use some of the preset ones up in the ribbon here, or I can come down here and go data and edit data graphic, and you'll see that I've got different things set up here. So again, I'll go through some of these a little bit, but you'll see me build it end to end, so I don't want to go through every single little step because you'll get bored. So I have the option when I do things to choose like an icon set or a text field or um, colour, we'll use the colour one in a little bit. The icon set you can see here is showing me based on a particular status that's coming from my SharePoint list, it'll change the icon there for me. And I can actually go ahead and choose, oh I've used it for um, the level here as well, but I could choose different types of icon sets. Uh, in this particular one, I've chosen that one, but if I did another one, again, it'll pull the data from the SharePoint list and display it as an icon. And you can actually, in fact, there's some good labs available now on building your own icon sets as well to, build, to put into, uh, into Visio and then to be used on these types of diagrams. So with this one, quite easy, I can join them and I can link them independently. I could put them on a different type of shape if I wanted to and um, I can have it updated so that when it goes into SharePoint it's automatically going to be refreshed and updated based on the information that's been loaded in to the SharePoint list in this case. Had I linked it to a spreadsheet or whatever, the same, same thing would apply. So another example of this is there's a space plan and this is actually just a downloadable one from I think it's visio.microsoft.com and you can see here I have a, a diagram of an office where everyone is seated and also all of the things that are in that, that particular office. So what hardware they're using on each of the desks and they've colour coded bits of it. So I'll just zoom in to show you the um, legend here and you can actually see I have to zoom right in, the department and so forth. So depending on the department you're in will be the colour of the desk. So it's taking something for the space data, so it's showing you which department they're in, what the capacity is and so forth. To, that's taken from a spreadsheet. And then they've got another one for network assets. So they've got a lot more information on this one here and they haven't got too many connected or I haven't connected too many up on this particular example here. But if you see this one here is telling you the IP address. I could also choose to put a lot more information into that if I wanted to. So I could choose, because that's already connected in that one, I could choose to edit the data graphics of this particular one and not just show the IP address but also show, for example, the manufacturer or something and make it a text one. And then I can um, go ahead and apply that. And if I had on apply, it actually shows me what it's going to look like before I actually save that so that if I want to change anything, I can and then it'll show it on all of the ones that have that same data graphic applied to it. With this one, you'll see if I go refresh data that I do have two different data sources in here so it allows me to connect those two different data sources um, from different places. So one could be, as I said, from an Excel spreadsheet whereas another one could be using a SQL database. And I can go ahead and insert a legend just from that on the page. Another example of using a Visio diagram for space data is something that I did for the, actually for the Singapore SharePoint conference, the Southeast Asia SharePoint conference last year. And what we wanted to do was have an easy way for, because we use SharePoint sites to manage the whole conference, and we have ad, admin people that would come along and um, update the SharePoint list. So they'd update the SharePoint list and say, okay, so um, Pinga has opted to be silver and they've chosen booth number one. So rather than having to update that and then update a, 
a, a diagram and then edit the diagram and whatever tool, snag it or <laughs> I think we were using, um, then it was easier for us to actually create, because this is a fixed diagram where the booth layout's confirmed, we can actually name the shape data as 01, 02, 03, whatever they are, and then go ahead and only have to update. So all our staff had to do was update the list, and then the diagram would be refreshed on our SharePoint site based on the data that was in the list. And this was automatically linked, so it's slightly different to the other ones where I was dragging and dropping them across because it was saying that in our SharePoint list, booth number 01 matched the shape of... Um, and it, and it gave a, a, a way for us to link the two shapes. So for the automatic linking, that's how that, that was a good example of how that worked. Some of the other ones, if you've got more dynamic sort of shapes and diagrams, you would be manually throwing them across um, rather than linking them in that way. Okay, so what else was I going to show you at this point? If we go back into our SharePoint site, I'll actually show you a couple of ways where we're using connecting web parts and some of those again as I said use the Visio files. So the first one, this is just in the HR site and I'm going to go into the organisation overview. For this one you can see that we've just got a pretty simple diagram here a Visio diagram, sorry, showing all the different offices. And then on the left hand side here, we're actually using a combination. So we have a list here, which is a list of office information. It has the description and it has other information there. So I'm going to be pulling some of that information from that list. And then I'm going to be pulling some of the information from the shape data. So if I was to look at the shape data behind one of these, uh, you'd get the information, meaning that the information is coming from Visio, and then there's information coming also from the SharePoint list as well. And then by clicking on the diagram, I've got a little bit of interactivity where it's also pulling the photo of the different um, office or whatever image you're trying to show. So to do this, this is using a little bit of JavaScript in a content editor web part that's obviously hidden on this particular page and that ate the information from the Visio diagram, from the SharePoint list, from the library that contains a picture and just shows you a, a, a sort of mashup of the entire lot to give a little bit of an interactive drawing. Another little example of that is the staff location. So this is actually quite a simple one and you'll see me do this in the end, the end demo shortly. And what it does is it's showing me a list of all the employees, so just a plain SharePoint list. It's telling me whether they're MOS certified so I can see what kind of certification my staff have and it's telling me the country that they reside in. So you can see on this side that we've got a map, uh, sorry, a diagram of the map of New Zealand and Australia in the same one. And the little icons here are showing me uh, green for yes, they're MOS certified and red for not. But I can also, because I've connected this diagram with this diagram, I can also filter on, for example, a department and it'll actually go ahead and highlight the um, icon, the shapes, sorry, that are in the HR department so I can see where the staff are that belong to the HR department. So again, just a nice easy way of showing some interaction between the two um, web parts here on the page and we'll do that as I said shortly. So one other nice little example that I do use actually in our own organisation all the time is I'm on the sales and marketing site here and I have the projects dashboard. So again, it's just an example of a little dashboard. And this is a Visio diagram and it's got connected data behind it that is pulled from a projects list. So that projects list, yes, I could just show that on the page and I could filter and I could see things, but it's quite nice to see it in a visual context. So the projects list, whoops, and <laughs> I'm just clicked on the wrong one. Um, shows me exactly how the projects are doing, what percentage are complete, and so forth. So the project manager can quite easily go in and check on that and update the status of their project from an overview. 
But then from a management point of view, I can come and see very quickly which ones are completed, on track, running behind and waiting on someone else or whatever, and they're all colour coded and I can see the percentage complete displayed in this particular way. Um, and again, that's just because these are data graphics within my Visio diagram. So the other thing that I can do with this is we've got connected web parts again that are connecting the project dashboard to project documents and to the tasks. And this is quite simply by using one field or one column within the documents library called project that links to the projects list or is a lookup. And same within the task one. So if I click on the, uh, the office strategic review, you'll see that the tasks change here and the documents change there. So I'm seeing the related documents and tasks, and I could have another one, I could have issues, I could have whatever I wanted to, but it's just a nice easy way to show an overview of, and I've seen this used at actually quite a few client sites where they don't want to get too complex with looking after projects, but they do want to have an idea on what's happening uh, so that they can just have a little dashboard like that. So that's just another example of it. Okay. So, key points there, looking at the different data graphics, linking data sources and then connecting the web parts. So we'll do an end-to-end -end just to show each part of that and how simple it is. And let's take a look at that. Before we do, oh, there's one other, this is quite a cool and I'll make sure I get the, um, the URL because I think I actually have this up on one of my screens. Um, so this here is on visio.microsoft.com and it's an example and it shows a mashup where it's showing where the detail pulled from the MSN site. So if I want to click on a particular country, you can see that this is just a Visio um, web part and then it's going to refresh the data with the information there so that I can see it there. So it was just showing a map view and again you could do that with any any number of business examples I'm sure. Okay that was that one. And again as I said in the beginning and I really don't have enough time to get into the whole dashboard side today but you can do full on reports that have a Visio diagram connected to an Excel web part, connected to charts, Visio web parts, whatever you want to show on your particular page but the idea being that you're creating dashboards by putting different web parts together and showing them in an interactive way. So what I want to do for this final little demonstration as an end-to-end -end is uh, pull data from a SharePoint list and create the Visio diagram and do some data graphics on it and then visualise it by showing connected web parts. So the example I'm using is a little bit old now because I used this last um, October but for anyone that's a rugby fan out there will know that New Zealand won the Rugby World Cup and um, we were obviously very proud of it. So that was a good example to be doing when I had to demonstrate this. So I'm going to go first of all into Visio and I'm going to create a new diagram. Actually we'll just create a blank one. I'm actually going to take, I didn't say it before but I actually quite like using um, stencils so I'm going to use our company stencil here only because it's got a pin on it that I want. I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture because I want to look, make it look good so I'm going to do the map of New Zealand and I'm going to make this a big one. Whoopsie. And then I'm going to just do a little bit of design stuff, might as well give it a pretty background, except then I'm actually going to take my diagram and put it on the background so that it doesn't get in the way when I'm messing around with other shapes on the page. So now I've got my uh, map of New Zealand, I can actually put a pin on everywhere and the idea here is to show where the games are or where they were being played for the finals and the, well not for the finals, for the whole of the Rugby World Cup. So what I need to do next is connect to some data, so I'm going to go to the data tab, link my data to shapes and I'm going to use the SharePoint list 
and it happens to be in this particular site so we're going to go ahead and connect to that and you can see that it gives me the opportunity here where I can link to a list or link to a view of a list I'm going to link to a list called games because all the data is pretty much there and then I'm going to go and import the data and it's going to bring it all through so you can see here now I have my external data I'm just going to show you it down here and I can see the location of where the game was the venue what team was playing who and what the game date was what the ticket cost was and then I've got another field here which is showing me whether or not there are tickets available get in quick or sold out so as I said this was last year's data but um, it was good to do a video demonstration so I'll just put that back over the side here so that I've got more room on my page um, and what I'm going to do is I, I'm first of all just going to take this top one and connect it to my shape and then we'll just drill in so that you can see the data there right so you can see by default it's given me a couple of fields which are not particularly of use so we're going to go ahead and change the data graphics so I can edit the data graphic here I don't want the URL I do want team one what I can do though is I can say well actually I don't want the um, label to be shown at all so let's just take that off let's do team two here and again I don't really want the label so we won't show that because I'm just trying to save real estate on my page again I can press uh, apply and you can see my two first things coming up there I'm going to add in another one and we will choose the ticket cost because we want to see what the cost is on an overall one and let's do it as a data bar and choose the speedometer as you can see I've got all sorts of different um, ratings here but let's choose this one I happen to know that there was about a minimum value of about 70 and a maximum of about 700 so that gives me a little bit of um, context around what I've got there and I can choose to alter other things there so that's all good I'm also going to choose the sold out I can't remember what it was called now sold field and let's do that as a color by value field and you can see that the getting quick it automatically puts the values in and it's going to do a fill color um, for me there based on whether the tickets are sold out or not so you can see that this has changed the color of it sorry my original pin color was a, a bit of a strange one so it's not quite right but anyway you can also choose the positions and so forth there so that's all good let's do that and there you go so now I can go ahead and say right well I want to put some other pins on the on the page and I'm just going to shrink that back down we'll put Invercargill down there and we'll put Rotorua in the middle there and we'll do I'm just going to come back out so that I know whether I've got um, we'll better do one of the sold out ones hadn't we which I think was the Wellington one because it sold out very fast and we can go ahead and enter a couple more in so idea being that I could pick up the whole lot and put them on and so forth and if I wanted to and wanted to do this all very like that map on the website I could actually put in metrics for the actual um, GPS coordinates I guess or somehow um, but that's just to give you an idea on showing the different I've got three different colors on there and I could go ahead and and put the rest in and so forth but yes all right so now that we've done that we can also insert a legend so we can do a vertical legend and it'll put that on the page and we can go ahead and save it so I'm going to save it uh, and remembering I have to save it as a web drawing and I'm going to save it back up to that library and let's call it Rugby World Cup and because I've saved it as a web drawing I can actually go directly into my diagram library and you can actually see the 
You're going to allow a refresh too. You can see the diagram in here, so I can drill in and I can see it all displayed within SharePoint. What I want to do though is actually create a new page with this diagram on. So I'm going to go ahead and create a page. And let's call it Rugby World Cup and just stay with what we've got there. And I'm going to add two lists to this. I'm going to add the games list, which is a games list that was we added as a data source. And you can see all the data there. I would usually obviously go and tidy all this up, but for the sake of time, we'll just keep going. So on the next web part I'm going to add is under business data again and is our Visio web access web part. And we're going to configure that by finding the Visio diagram that we want. And it was in our process diagrams library. And it was called RWC. And again, I'd probably do a lot more with the layout of the web part. To show different things and change different things. And probably give it a bit wider width. Oh. And then what we're going to do is just connect the two web parts a little the same as that other demonstration that you saw. So that we can, oops, I'll just stop editing that. So that then when we highlight on one particular thing, we see other ones on the page. I need to, I didn't actually... So now what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and go with the connections and send the table to from one to the other. Now you can do all of these other connections, get parameters from or send filter values to and so forth. But in this particular case, I actually just want to show a highlight and they are connected anyway through the shapes and the data that's in the list. So it's actually a very easy one. And once I've done that, I should be able to then go ahead and choose a team, and remember I only put a few on the page, so hopefully I did put the right one on the page. Oops, I was actually trying to choose Tonga there. Chose the wrong one. And once I've filtered on Tonga, you can see that it's going to highlight the games where Tonga is, and I obviously only put that top one on the page. but. Hopefully that makes sense and that was a nice easy way of showing um, just a demonstration of interacting data with lists and diagrams on one page. So that kind of takes me pretty much to the end of my presentation I think, which was about on time. Um, so I do have time for a little bit of questions I think. Just to finish up on that, I did have um, dashboards enabling quick decision making and bringing together multiple sets of data. So I would have liked to have shown some of those more mashups where you're using Excel and some of the other features, BI capability of uh, web parts, but we were really just focusing on busy on this particular case. So yes, it's all about telling a story. So thank you. Alpesh, I'm finished early. Wow, that was fantastic. Uh, it definitely kept me I think Ross, uh, I'm not sure about the others, but I'm sure everyone did get value out of it. Thank you so much, Debbie. I really appreciate that. No worries. Yeah, if anyone's got any questions. I don't see any, any questions pop up, so... Uh, okay, well, I hope that was useful. And was. enjoy yeah. the rest of your SharePoint India Day. Sure. Thank you very much, Debbie. 
and I'll get in touch with you later. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.